but the great thing about the arts is the arts is what saved everybody over these past two years. I mean, everybody looked for creative people to bring them some kind of joy or some kind of escape. And that must have been great for you. Yeah, yeah. I um, mean, and, and it's all, it's it's really it's wonderful to be able to offer a, a type of escape for people. Um, Moulin Rouge, in particular, you know, it's one of those types of shows where, you know, you can just walk in there and and you know just sort of forget that you just walked, you know, that you're in Times Square, you know, and whatever's going on in your life is happening, and just immerse yourself in in music. And, you know, and the lights, Yeah, <laughs> you know. Well, we're gonna get into Moulin Rouge, but I have to start mm. with The Accidental Wolf is back yeah. for season two, streaming on topic. This mm. is an amazing series. I mm. was obsessed with season one. I'm even more obsessed with season oh. two. How yeah. did the show come about for you, Sar, to be a part of? Um, right, well, that started, um, I, I already knew Ariane um through uh new york city theater community and uh also through the new york city iranian community i have uh, some very very close links uh there and so that's how my relationship with Aryan uh began to uh, develop over the years and uh when he approached me about this project um for all the things he had to say about it I was in, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, you know, we, we could talk, you know, specifics uh, uh, about that, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, um, it, it, it was a solid pitch and well, to get more specifically, um, I mean, I, I, I was drawn to his vision for the arc of the story and I was also, uh, drawn to, um, inform um his, his method of storytelling uh i i for one thought that you know the idea of um, a psychological thriller with empathy being sort of the um you know the driving uh impulse you know uh well i, I thought that was fresh and uh, i i think it was probably around 2017 oh, at least 2017 if not earlier uh, when he first approached me about it. And then, um, I mean, he was proposing episodes you know, even shorter than what they are now, which was also <laughs> um, a really interesting uh, approach. Uh, you know, like really short episodes and packed, packed full of things. Uh, so there was that. And then also, uh, my father's family um, is from and based uh, primarily in Sierra Leone, which is where uh, a lot of the story takes place, um, even, even story that isn't seen on screen. And, um, you know, my, my family, you know, we survived the, the decade long civil war in the 90s, uh, as well as the, uh, uh, the, Ebola, um, the Ebola outbreak. Uh, in the in the teens of 2000, and um, you know the, the the questions around the laboratories, you know that were working, you know in some of the more remote remote parts of the country, uh, you know the, the questions around those laboratories. I mean, they they played a, a psycho, they had a psychological effect on a lot of people. Um, in country, you know, trying to understand, you know, what was really going on. So, you know, for at least for those many reasons, um, and probably more, I, I was 100% attracted. Yeah. To He's such a brilliant project. writer. Before we get into that, talk about the role that you play and what you love about him. Ah, yeah. Well, um, <laughs> I think it's the first time I've played a Sierra Leonean on on camera. So. Uh, you know, that, that, that was really interesting and to play a Sierra Leonean in New York and, and kind of just deal with, you know, what that is, you know, where Sierra Leoneans are and, um, you know, what are some of the ambiguities about, um, the life 
that some Sierra Leoneans uh, lead uh, in New York City, particularly those who came here fleeing the conflict um, in the 90s. And uh, Arian's openness um, from what he wrote and then to also, you know, try to get as close to the reality of what, you know, of marrying what he wrote to what is actually going on on the ground uh, was a really wonderful um, and interesting process. Uh, as a result, I had the opportunity to introduce Arian to other Sierra Leoneans um, uh, leading different types of lives here in the city and using that or integrating that into how the story uh, would unfold or how it unfolds. You know, not only do we get to watch you on the small screen on topic in this beautiful series, but you're also back on Broadway doing what you do best in Moulin Rouge. How exciting is it being back on Broadway again? And what do you remember about that first performance back on stage again in the show? Hmm. Uh, well, yeah, it's it's great being back on Broadway, and um, you know, for for so many different reasons. I mean, it's 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 a blessing to be able to to engage in personally. Uh, I find it a blessing to be able to engage in in work that um, I enjoy enough to where even when it's difficult, uh, it's still pretty good. Uh, so you know, b being back has, has been a, uh, a really joyous experience. You know, uh, when, we, when we started back, we experienced something that is not exclusive to Moulin Rouge, to the Moulin Rouge company. Uh, oh, and I'm sure you heard about this or experienced it yourself. When people, when the shows began to open, the audiences uh, were obviously quite hungry. Th those who enjoy this type of um, offering, they were quite hungry for it. And you know, when we finish a number, the enthusiasm from the audience, you know, the 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 type of applause and the ovations, the standing ovation that would happen, you know, scene after scene, number after number would cause some two hour shows to, to end up running for three, <laughs> you know, in, in those early days. Um, well, it, it was really um, gratifying, satisfying. And uh, the tears of joy uh, were, were like offerings. Um, it was wonderful.